All right, everybody, Sup Podcast, episode number 76. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney, and to my left, my motherfucking guy. Hi, Lawrence <laughs> Loach. <laughs> Why'd you put your media voice on? I don't know, man. I'm just having a rough day. Because <laughs> you, 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 you didn't pass and then you didn't make any buckets? No, nah, I just had, I was playing, I had a rough day playing basketball. I think I'm just going to get some shots up tomorrow, make myself feel better. That's about it, man. <laughs> Episode seventy six. I am back from Portland. I I never went to Portland. I he, just stayed here. In, my man in didn't Europe. go anywhere. He was chilling. I was here. Did you do anything cool while I was gone? Yeah, man, I did. I got a uh, Popeye's chicken sandwich, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. How is it? Is it is, is it the hype? That shit was. I I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. And for everyone listening, all the listeners who haven't tried it, try it. I mean, if you eat, if you eat chicken, they're out of stock, aren't they? They're yeah. not even making anymore. I don't know. You you got to I think it's one of those you got to get lucky type things and just go to the right Popeyes at the right time cuz I I sure as hell did cuz I got one of the last sandwiches. And when I went there, I don't eat I don't eat mayonnaise, so it's kind of like I think it that's what also helps the sandwich. But I oh. because it's like <clears throat> the spicy one has like a spicy mayo. Right. And then the regular one has mayo, but I went in there and I was, you know, I <laughs> I went to this Popeyes and I didn't see a we sold out of chicken sandwiches sign. So I was like, all right, let me just go further. And you didn't see the Times New Roman or the Ariel nah, on the printed front on the eight and a half by eleven. I didn't see it, Chris. So I was like, I right, <laughs> uh, go in there and see what's going on. The line was probably like it was probably like ten people ahead of me, and I saw these young African American men getting. <laughs> chicken sandwich i saw they had the chicken sandwich bag and i was like oh man i said lawrence you gotta get one and and i i got one and i actually i was like miss can you make mine without mayo and she was like they pre-made and she said i don't think we have any more because they pre-made them and i was like miss oh, listen i don't eat mayonnaise can you see and uh she went to the back and they got me one. Oh shit the custom order the custom order you nike id this bitch i nike id'd <laughs> it and um and I and I got the sandwich, and when I got my sandwich, she said there was. She said she yelled out to the line. She said there are fifteen sandwiches left. Wow! And she announced it. She announced it, and when and when and when she said there was fifteen sandwiches left, motherfuckers was getting off that line. And, Damn! And they was upset. It was like the pigeon dunk in the fucking Popeyes. Yeah, and, you know, she kept counting down. I remember when I was because I had to wait for my custom order, and she was like, "There's six left," and and motherfuckers was getting antsy, and you know. <laughs> And uh, it's yeah, man. It's uh, it's uh, listen, guys. It's a chicken sandwich, but it's good. I'm not gonna sit here and act like it's not. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's one of those treats that you treat yourself to, if you like, if you could find one. <laughs> so, all right, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I've thought a lot. Spend about the whole fucking podcast <laughs> on chicken sandwiches. Let everyone know how good the guy. No, I've been thinking. Was. I've been thinking about the chicken sandwich a lot because I was with my boy in Portland, um, mm-hmm. who w- it was very confused about the whole phenomenon. He, the dude. So if you don't, uh, if you're not subscribed on Patreon, go on Patreon because we have a great uh, Patreon interview with my boy who I was with in Portland who works at Jordan. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was kicking it with him, mm-hmm. and he was confused about all the sandwich hype. So him and I were like, uh, kind of like trying to figure out what the big deal is. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, Yo, what are, what's like Chick Fil A gonna do? Because mm-hmm. this is their this is their thing. The chicken sandwich is what's their thing. That's man? their thing, man. They ain't on this bucket of chicken shit. I was like, Yo, if if you're Chick Fil A, you got to come out with a bucket of chicken. Nah, 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 nah. Listen, man, they still got the chicken sandwich game on lock, man. Listen, it's too many people that are like people. Some people, like people, message me and they was like, "Yo, I'm a loyal Chick Fil A subscriber. I would never eat that filth, that Popeyes." <laughs> like people was legitimately like talking that shit, and I was like, "God damn! Like this is a fucking sandwich. Like you, you're making it seem like you, you know, it's a house or like a car. <laughs> like you got brand loyalty to Acura or fucking BMW. It's a motherfucking three ninety nine chicken sandwich that everyone should try out." And that's it, man. So it was good, and you know. Also, I love how there were like some libertarian versions of this that were like screaming McChicken. They're like, "No, it's the McChicken. The nah. McChicken is like, get the fuck out of here." No, 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 that's solid, man. But like I said, just it goes to show you, man, that uh, line culture is everywhere. Like, like you see people waiting hours for a chicken. Sandwich. I know. And that's kind of crazy to me, man. I mean, you see Quavo. There's headlines of Quavo trying to flip the chicken for $1,000 a piece. You're like, what the fuck are you doing, dog? Come on, bro. Like, come on, Quavo. Like, stop it. Stop and then it. Future, I saw on his uh, IG stories, he was like, yo, I went to the hood spot, got a chicken sandwich, and I just put it in a Popeye's wrapper that I had in my car, and Re- I gave it to my girl, and uh-huh. she was all hype. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was like, yo, Future, it's dirty, bro. Oh, man. Come on, man. Stop it. That's what I'm saying, guys. Stop it. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's 
it's not worth it. A fucking chicken sandwich is not that serious. A thousand. Who's paying a thousand dollars like for a chicken sandwich? Who's paying thousand dollars for a pair of sneakers? A lot of people. A lot of people. You would think they retail at you know one something. They're made for twenty bucks in China, and people are paying a thousand dollars for yeah, twenty people. You know no what I mean? One, no one's paying that for a chicken sandwich. I can tell you that. So moving on, let's let's get to the streetwear shit. Let's get to the streetwear. Supreme drop. Uh, we won on uh, what was it Monday? I don't even know. I was Online. gone. Yeah, yeah, I was here. I I, I caught the T-shirt. Uh, Which one? Mary J. Blige. Oh, nice man. Or am I gonna keep it? That's the question. Everyone. What size is it? XL. You got yeah, your size. Size. I got nice man. Large. That's a that's a but big I got, W. I got a I got it in white. I should have got it in black, but I ain't want to just like I I wanted a little bit of like you know a little different you know. Yeah, no, no. I like I like the white. I think stick with the white. Yeah. I, the white will sell better than the black, I think, nah, if you ask me. Black, black is always going to move with Supreme. Like, black and, like, a, like they'll have a, a certain color. But black is doing, and it's not even, bro, the T-shirt was, like, I think 48 bucks or some shit like that. Yeah, and it's, it's not like bad. Barely, it's on StockX, it's, like, 70, 80 bucks. Like, it's, like, you know, if you want Supreme, you sh- you'll you be able to get Supreme. I, walk, I went to the Supreme store on Saturday and, uh, in Brooklyn and uh, just on some, like, just checking shit out. And I had, um... I wasn't sure if I was going to get the the there was a leopard supreme uh, Gore Tex hat, mm. and um, and I kind of like when I was online I was like I wasn't going to do two separate orders I wasn't paying ten dollars for shipping, and I went to the store on Saturday and they had them shits and I just bought it for fifty eight bucks. Hell yeah! But it's like you know like I how said, many hats you up to now? I don't even know, man. It's, you got a lot of hats. It's, yeah, it's like when you you know after you have sex with you know so many girls it's like do you really remember the number like, like i remember the 69 yeah that's what I'm saying. all right there you go so it's like it's the same thing bro i don't know how many fucking hats i got but i i have too many and i'm trying to like you know i'm i'm, I'm trying to just i want to get in different hats like i want to start because i'm like you know I, I like a lot of basics you going you going to the fitteds no nah, i'm not gonna do fitteds man i was sticking with five panel i'm gonna stick with maybe some yeah like uh like different hats you know different brand hats I'm sure maybe I'm officer. What's your boy's brand again? That was a good hat. Oh, uh, uptown, downtown, uh, Switzerland, uh, U D T C H or something like that. C-H-C. Where hell yeah, yeah. That's my that's my boy shit. It's fire. Uh, you know what the lowest key fire hats are? What? It's triple A baseball hats. Triple A. Triple A baseball hats are the most fire hats because it's like they're like. It's always like the mascots, and mm-hmm. they always have dumbass names. So it'll be like the Montreal Bacon. Really? Yeah, and it'll just be three slices of bacon on the head or some. Sh- I'm not joking, bro. That shit is hilarious. That I made that hilarious. up, but they're. It, I knew you did. I yeah, but you could you you take you, that shit, and it's it's the same everywhere. And you know the fucking listeners are gonna know too, and then they're gonna be like, "Look at Chris making shit, <laughs> doing running shit on us in this fucking in this on this episode." Chris runs new jokes. All right. <laughs> Uh, Wait, hold on. Triple A baseball hats. I'm gonna see what the first one is. You got drafts tomorrow? I got fan. I got two more fantasy football drafts uh, coming up tomorrow and uh, Tuesday. So I'm I'm excited to get it going. Get this season started with. Hopefully, make some money. Like yeah, I- look, look at this shit. You got like fighting shrimp on there. You can get you can get new era official fitteds. Look at this. That's like a um artichoke. <laughs> it's just an artichoke on a fitted it's hat. Fucking hilarious. It's just man. so funny. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm looking forward, man. I'm looking forward to my drafts. Uh, Come on, dog. Look at that. That's a taco. Yeah. That's literally a taco on a fucking New Era hat, dog. Nah, I know, I know, I know. I know. Let's, uh, real quickly, before we before we talk about fantasy football and all that shit, man, uh, Supreme's dropping another uh, SB Dunk Low yep. this week. Uh, the Jewel. Week two. Uh, a lot of people are not fans of it. Uh, nah, uh, Air Force uh, heads alike who grew up with the Jewel. Or mad because they're like, yo, leave my jewel alone. Mm-hmm, 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 it's mm-hmm. not on a force, but they're kind of like, yo, you're trying to disrespect in the jewel. Which, you know, every, mm-hmm. I think every time, I think anything that Supreme kind of touches now, it's a little disrespect because they're like, yeah, we can just do whatever we want. We'll do whatever this. we want, man. With no, re- with no remorse, bro. And it's, uh, it's interesting, man. Even uh, everyone is kind of just like, let's just see what happens. But they're still gonna, they're people, they're gonna sell out, and people of are, course. Gonna, yeah, it's a, it's a fucking Supreme dunk. I mean, it's, obviously, it's not, you know. In the realm of the elephant print and shit like that, but no, it's, it, I mean, as far as the design, it's actually pretty solid. I, they just, I, I'm not even mad at it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. But um, I mean, some of the other shit they're coming out with, mad stupid. Like the fucking burner phone. I swear to God, if I see anyone use that burner phone, I'm a fucking 
I'm, I mean, I'm just going to, in my head, think, like, you're a loser. <laughs> but, I mean, that's about it. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? You're going to really take that to T-Mobile and go, like, yo, can you turn this on for me? Yes, and they will. No, they won't, Lawrence. Yes, they fucking will. <laughs> Lawrence is putting on a hoodie. <laughs> no, dude. Yes, they will. But tell, there's no way I will respect anybody that uses that phone. I'm pretty sure you have a similar feeling. No. Hi, what? No, I don't give a fuck about that. That's. A, I don't know if they could pick you up. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about a phone, a burner phone. I don't, but no, I think Supreme. They just do whatever. Some of their, some of their uh, accessories, accessories are stupid. I like people. The Timex watch did well. Yeah, the Timex watch. They have a Pyrex cup too. Pyrex. Really? Yeah, which is low key. Um, it's funny because Pyrex and Pyrex. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but yeah, mm-hmm. Pyrex cup is shit. Uh, I mean, that's actually pretty cool. Like I told you, my theory on the on the accessories is like if you could just use them in everyday life. Like, just replace the shit that you actually use with the branded thing. Mm-hmm. Which is why the burner phone is dumb. The yeah. burner phone is stupid because that's over. Now, you look stupid going back in time to where it's, like, to have a Supreme fucking... Burner phone? Yeah, it's dumb. Like, no, nah, get yeah. out of here. The Pyrex cup, fire. Voodoo doll, weird. The dumbbell is stupid because they only come with one. If you can get a set of dumbbells, like, if you could rip them down in your house, you yeah, know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, really work out in them. But that's... A, wait, there's like a f- one-pounder or some shit? A, a one pound, dun- yeah, and it's still and it's just gonna be like the brick, man. I feel like a dumb. I would cop a Supreme dumbbell, but I mean, if it's one pound, I mean, I mean, I would cop a Supreme set. Yeah, you I would feel cop, me. Yeah, I would cop like a a a fifty pounder or a twenty five. Yeah, it's something, something I could to, actually work with. That's something you probably have to get in the store. I don't think they're gonna ship <laughs> no, that. They're not, gonna- they're not. They're not gonna ship that for ten bucks <laughs> to your fucking house in Idaho. Nah, they're not gonna do that. So, um, <laughs> that shit is funny as shit. Um, like I was, yeah, bro. I got I got my fantasy football dress. For you listeners out there, I know, you know, streetwear and fantasy football usually isn't like, you know, hand in hand. But if you guys are drafting and this episode is going to come out in a few hours, uh, you know, there's a lot of big news. Uh, there's, you know, I, I, Zeke Elliott from the Dallas Cowboys. He's holding out. You got Andrew Luck. He retired. You know, he just. Which, felt- how did, did you already have a couple drafts before uh, he retired? Uh, yes, I did have. Uh, I had one draft. Uh, before he retired, and then I had a second draft the day after. So he retired on a Saturday night, and then, um, and then I drafted Sunday morning. So we were aware of the news. Yeah, but you didn't in the the one before he retired. You didn't grab. No, him, I right? didn't grab. You know why? Because he was. Um, I, there was reports out of camp that he was hurt. Uh, so it was like he was nursing a calf injury, right? Yeah. And before the se- before like all this calf injury news like really came out with Andrew Luck, I was like, I was like, oh shit, like this is gonna be a great year for him, right? I felt it. I said, this is, you know, he had hurt his shoulder, you know, 2017. Then he came back last season, and yep. he was he was you know getting back in the game. And then this year, I was like, this is gonna be the year that Andrew Luck has a, an amazing season. And he just fucking he he gave he he quit. And a lot of people are 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 saying that, hey man, you know, he um they understand, and I understand too, you know, especially if you know you you hurt yourself, and then you you try and you know once again, I mean, if we hurt ourselves, bro, you just don't play. Yeah, for don't six play. Weeks. No, no, I'm saying no, no. If you hurt yourself, you don't like you know. I remember hurting my knee. Maybe you know, almost ten years ago, and I, I uh, sprained. You're still hurting, bro. Well, listen, <laughs> I am. Uh, but no, I I hurt. I I like really sprained my meniscus uh, really bad, and it was. Uh, and I remember, man, the doctor said I couldn't play basketball for around six weeks. I thought I tore my ACL, but he said you tore. He sprained your meniscus. I had to go to therapy, and uh, I remember around week four i was like can i play and he was like you want to test it out and i, yeah. I and i just couldn't I, I mentally i wasn't ready physically i wasn't ready it took me another like i think three weeks it took me seven weeks to finally like get back on the basketball court and could you imagine like you know you i mean granted these guys are making you know andrew luck was making a hundred million dollars yeah but it's you know it's like all right so my knee hurts it's it, the tissue is fucked up and then you know and then i got a calf injury and then my quad hurts but you know i, I gotta still play and now I'm, I'm i'm overcompensating on another and it's just like yo that shit after a while breaks you down so i'm not mad that he quit i'm not mad that he retired but uh it definitely was interesting timing yeah of course right before the season like yeah like he had all off season to think about it and he waited till the very last set. like he handed his paper the day was due you know what i mean basically yeah yeah he, you know so i think that's what and you know i'm sure and i'm sure he tried to push it and push it but you know it, it it's rough man and and i understand it and um 
So I, you know, as a actually a guy who is an Indianapolis Colts fan because of Peyton Manning, I, you know, hurt to see it. And um, and if you guys draft guys like Marlon Mack and and uh, and T. Y. Hilton and Eric Ebron, you're gonna be listen, man. Dra- they get knocked down a notch. And um, yeah, and I'm excited for the season. That's what that means, guys. Fantasy football means the NFL season's here. First game of the season is Thursday. We're like five days away from the Bears and the Packers, and let's get it going. And with that being said, Jay Z is fucking trying to be an owner. <laughs> yeah, he's not really going to get that ownership though. But I guess him and the NFL are going to. They announced like some sort of motivational clothing line, mm-hmm. which I mean, I don't know how much I buy into that. But I guess it's supposed to be like a, you know, pro uh, equality, pro, you know, just everything that you would think that um, Kaepernick's uh, voice was supposed to stand for, Mm -hmm. which is on a T-shirt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the kind of angle, which I don't know if anyone's going to bite. But I'm going to be interesting, uh, interested to see what they look like, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't really, that Dame Dash interview was fucking hilarious, though. I don't know if you watched it. No, I haven't. He just said he ain't shit. Dame is, listen, man. (laughs) Dude, just you know what's crazy is like kids after like I don't know how old like I mean just like they're not gonna understand the importance of this them as a unit and as a, a divorce. It's so crazy, yeah. and I loved in the interview because Dame was smart. He was just like, so what's the because the guy asked him what the deal is. He's like, so what what is even the stip- stipulations of the deal? Like, what mm-hmm. are they? And he was like, I don't know what they are. He's like, all right, why are we even talking about them? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then he just proceeded to talk about them though. He just went all in. And he's just like, yo, Jay-Z ain't shit. But that was the first time he actually, like, said it out loud. He usually would be, like, ducking and dodging a little bit, going, like, yeah, I don't really fuck with, the, like, what his camp is doing over in this section. He would never directly say mm-hmm. Jay-Z ain't shit, but he finally did it in this interview. I don't know why, but he did. <laughs> you know, uh, their relationship is so interesting to me. Yes. Man. It's because it's it's the classic uh, Jay basically <laughs> left them niggas. Like, that's the only <laughs> way I can say it. Like, you know what I mean? They went from business partners to, to enemies bro and uh, you know i i think J- I, I think dame has gone on record prior and, and kind of came at hope i don't think he's always i think no he's always a al- he has never came that hard like some one thing that he said in the interview because they were talking i guess like jermaine dupree was supposed to do a deal with the nfl and mm-hmm. supposedly jay got him out of it like mm-hmm. convinced him not to do it and then you know he turns around jermaine and- dupree ain't get no fucking nfl <laughs> deal all right listen all that jermaine, dude, who the fuck no disrespect to jermaine dupree jermaine o'neill jermaine fowler but that <laughs> nigga ain't no motherfucker he ain't get no, <laughs> no nfl no deal all right jermaine. everyone named jermaine like nah bro jermaine jermaine dupree ain't get no nfl deal all right jay-z you know, is this is the thing. As big as Jay Z is, and I, you know, I always say this about Jay, bro. The M, the the Brooklyn Nets deal showed me something. Yeah, of course. And when I say it showed me something, like Jay is Jay. Jay's huge. Jay is fucking gonna. You know what I mean? But when when Jay be like, I'm an owner and all that. I mean, yeah, he's he's very small owner, which is yeah. I'm not gonna sit here and knock that. But you know, when people be like, Jay is this nah, bro, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. But I hope uh but yeah, Jay is uh, he's being he's very outspoken. I saw a clip of him the other day talking about, you know, single parent homes uh-huh. and how they uh you know, how um it causes young men to get killed by the police. I know it's a small clip. Right. But a lot of people weren't happy about that. You know, and I and I'm this is what I'm gonna say about Jay. I feel like I feel like Jay has done a lot for uh, police, like, you know, police reform. Like when I say like, you know, like criminal reform and uh, maybe I'm saying it incorrectly, but like, you know, like. He, Say he, it, bro. Get it off your chest. No, like, like he's done docs about like Khalif Browder and all these. Go you off, know, King. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like he's done like he's, you know, with the whole Meek Mill being in jail and like. him. No, being Jay's a, done his fair share of things done, for the community. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I'm not going to sit here and deny yeah. that. But it's kind of interesting, like, because they tried to clip it and be like, yo, Jay was on some, you know, single parent homes and, you know, and black men, are, you know, they like, you know, they don't have, you know, they don't take authority well and blah, also, blah, blah. Also, they forget he comes from a single parent home. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, but. um, Well, I mean, his dad, got, I don't know exactly. He got locked up, right, or some shit? Oh, man. He just wasn't around. I don't no, know. No. But no, nah, he bigs up his mom as being like the big parent in his, you know, in his life and mm-hmm. his dad not being around, so. I don't know, man. Shout out to Jay, I guess. Uh, also, shout out to Dame. Sure. Shout out to whole Rockefeller. <laughs> I got a, I got a funny Dame Dash story. I could. Oh yeah, him. drop it. 
Bro, this is this is like the the height of Dame Dash. All right, so I was um I got a story about the low of Dame Dash, but you will go you go. And all I'll right, go. so this is 2001, 2002. Like I remember I was in the NBA store, right? And I was I, at the time I, this was before I started working there, but I remember I was just like trying to get a jersey. And um I remember Dame was in there. And he was working with like a, one of the employees and and I mean when I say you know, there's certain celebrities. I remember when I used to work in the NBA store, celebrities would come in and they would be the nicest people to me. Like, they would, you know, you would help them, you know. And I remember Jada Kiss came in. All, you know, all these celebrities that came in the NBA store. Fuck yeah, Dwayne Kiss. Wade, you know, fucking Fat Joe. And I remember Dame. And like I said, I wasn't working there at the time, but there was this Asian kid that was helping him. He was like, hey, Mr. Dash, you know, big fan, you know, anything I can help you with. And Dame's like, yo, just give me all the socks and don't talk to me, right? And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit, bro. <laughs> Like I felt so bad. Like, I I just was watching it, and I was like, God damn! Like, like it kind of like it was like, damn, damn! Like I know you at the height of your shit right now. This is like this, you know. Maybe he was going through his own shit. This is you know, Leah just passed away, you know. But I just remember the way he was talking to this kid. And I felt so bad for this sales <laughs> associate. The way he he was just like, yo, basically like, yo, yo, don't talk to me. Just give me all the socks. That's all I need. I don't want to hear nothing from you. But he gets to have this story forever. <laughs> He gets to have that. Yo, I got disrespected by, by Dame, Dame Dash. Dash in the NBA store. I just remember, bro, I just remember, like I said, I remember that happened. And then I ended up working at the NBA store a few years later. And I just was, like, very wary of celebrities coming in. Of course. In. Yeah, you have to be. You know, I remember, like, you know, and then when you started really, like, meeting some of these dudes, like, who would just pull, because this is the height of the Jer- Jersey era. So dudes was, I remember Allen Iverson came through one time, and I, you know. And, and Hell you, yeah. And you, and you right next to AI, and he's not, you know, he, they say he's, what, six feet, six one, but he's like, I remember being taller. He's like three, four. And, no, he's not three, four. <laughs> But he was still like a nice dude. Like I have so many stories about so many celebrities that like used to Fat Joe with his fucking sneakers would pull up. Dwayne Wade. I remember one of our coworkers passed away, and I remember D Wade. He just seen the jersey because we all signed it, and I remember D Wade was on some like, "Yo, what's this about?" And, I, and they told him, and D Wade was like, "Fuck that, I'm signing and all that." And hell just, yeah, dude, shout out to Wade. But like you know, and I and like I said, I mean, I'm not saying that you know, I'm not gonna say like who's right and who's wrong, whether it was Jay or Dame and their breakup. But like you know, I mean, they both you know they both interesting characters. <laughs> yeah. That's the best way to put it. So I met Dame uh, while I was working at Echo, mm-hmm. and at this point, it wasn't Echo anymore. It was the collective where it was like A Life was in there, Rocksmith, uh-huh. Wu Tang, like all the sub brands or whatever. Mm-hmm. So. I made all the presentations for the owner Seth Gernsberg. Okay. So I was like the deck guy. That's mm. what that's a slang term for like a presentation is like a deck. Okay. So <laughs> he, I made like all the decks that he would have for his business meetings. And mm. he was weird about it cuz he would never want to show them on a screen or have any like file transferable thing. He always wanted a printed copy. Okay. So he could go page by page with the person in front of him. Kind of old school, but whatever, it's cool like, you know, do what you got to do. Um but Dame comes in one time and then Seth calls me into his office. He's like, hey, can you print the deck? And I knew what that meant. It was like the, the major deck he had for every business meeting. Okay. So I was like, oh, yeah, I got you. So I went, printed it, came back. And then, um, you know, always two copies because it's like for every copy in there. It's just him and Dame. I handed it to Seth and I handed it to Dame. I was like, oh, shit, you're Dame Dash. And he's like, who the fuck else would I be? <laughs> and I look at Seth and I go, uh, very nice to meet you. And I just walked away. <laughs> Bro. Yo, this shit was fire. I remember I went to my desk. I was like. Dame Dash just got mad at me because I didn't know it was Dame Dash. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. Let's talk. Let's let's talk about this because I, you know, I think this is. I mean, I know this is like more of not a streetwear issue per se, but when I when I'm a, when I'm like see like celebrities or like famous like basketball players, I like I I I'm not even gonna lie to you. I I've seen you know a bunch from Joakim Noah to Kendrick Perkins to like you know um I remember uh, to CJ McCollum from the Portland Trail Blazers and like when I see a lot of these like I, you know obviously being a stand up like I I was like 5 feet away from Dave Chappelle one time or like you know or like Chris Rock and like I try like I try not to get like I don't ever Lamar Odom I remember me seeing Lamar Odom I was like like I try not to get too hyped because I don't want to like you know that whole like you meet, you see someone, and then you be like, "Oh shit!" You know, and they be like, "Yo, man, get the fuck out of my face!" Yeah, like, bro, I don't want that because then I don't like me, Lawrence Deloach. Like, I'm nah, bro. You're not gonna talk to me like that. You're not gonna disrespect <laughs> me, bro. <laughs> just not. Just we just not gonna do that. Like, I I don't play that shit. So like, 
you know, I just kind of keep my distance. Like, you know, I remember the, the wildest shit. And this is this is crazy. And I think we I don't know if you want to move on. But I remember one time this is this summer. I saw Nick Collison. He played for the uh, I was in Times Square. And I just like I remember seeing this tall white dude. And I was like, oh, shit, that is Nick Collison from the Seattle Supersonics slash Oklahoma City Thunder. And and he played with them. He played with one franchise, basically, the, the organization his entire career. And I just remember seeing him. We were, like, I was walking one way, and he was walking towards me. And I was like, oh, shit, it's Nick Collison. That's what I said. He said, yeah, yeah, it's me. And then we just, <laughs> and, and I was like, yo, bro, I was, like, big fan of you since you was in Kansas, since you was in college. And that was, like, the most, I think, open I've ever, like, been off a of celebrity. But, like, bro, I can't do that. Like I said, man, dang, like when that, that Dame shit, like, scarred me, bro. And I wasn't even. Yeah, like, the Dame shit kind of scarred me, too. I was like, damn, bro. Like, he was just yelling at the kid to get him some motherfucking socks. So, uh, did I tell the story when I met the locks on the podcast? I think you did. Did I? Yeah. I think anyway, just I to think re- it was episode 27. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, you don't know that nah, shit. Get the fuck out of here. No, just to run it through so maybe, because maybe we've got new listeners. Basically, while I was at Sprayground, mm-hmm. uh, Styles P is a big fan of the brand. And uh, Rock Nation, <laughs> well, I'm not joking, bro. He loves this shit. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you laughing at some other shit? I see you. Nah. <laughs> no, so he's a big fan of the brand, and my fucking um, Rock Nation's in the building, and they're signed to Rock Nation. Um, so and for whatever reason, one of the owners at the time was upstairs, and he was like, "Oh, there's actually a kid. There's a big fan of you guys. You want to come down to the Sprayground offices?" And Styles was like, "Yo, I love Sprayground." It's my Styles P impression. <laughs> so they come down. I just dap them all up, but he liked it so much that he was just like, "Yo, here's my number." So I have his number for no reason. Word. I texted him when I left Sprague. I was like, yo, bro, if you need anything, let me know. Like, you know, I'll be cheap because you're one of my favorite. He was like, where did I meet you at? No, so one time, though, outside the office, he seen me. And I was looking at him like, yo, is, do you think it's cool if I... Like, in my head, I'm thinking, like, do I, do I think it's cool if I go and talk to him? And he's looking at me like, where do I know this motherfucker? And, like, I saw it, like, his, his like, confusion in his eyes. And it seemed sort of welcoming. So I was like, yo, what up? And so he dapped me up, and we are kind of talking for a second. And the second I mentioned Spray Ground, he remembered, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yo, you got to text me. I want that back. So I was like, all right, I'll go up there and see if I got it. And then I grabbed it for him. It was cool. He's a good guy. Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah, he didn't respond to my shit, but I'm still going to go buy a juice from him one day. Good, man. Go go get a juice, man. So uh, speaking of juice, uh, Jordan Brand uh, uh-huh. has got the juice uh, right now. <laughs> Segway King. Segway. Uh, <laughs> Saturday they released a pair of... Uh, uh, Air Jordan ones, uh, the blue or U- UNC blue and like what do they call them? They call them like the uh, it's something it was, that begins with oh whatever it is. I don't Obsidian, get it. Obsidian, yeah, blue. Obsidian, Obsidian, yeah. I don't get what the hype is around these. These are like just a GA. I feel What's like a GA. Ge- uh, ge- oh, GR. I mean general release. General release. I said general admission in my head. But I thought they were just some general shit. Like I didn't think I anybody. I don't think they're. I don't think they're. G- I'm, I'm not gonna say they're in the realm of a GR. I'm just gonna say like I think all Jordan ones with the Nike for the most part aren't GRs, but they're lim- they may be limited GR. Like when I say limited yeah, GR, yeah, just because they're still gonna be like, bro, they're still gonna be. A, they're still a hype on a Jordan one, no matter what it is. Yeah, but I'm love- also like, yo, it's just a blue. It's nothing special about these. It's not a OG colorway. It's not uh, associated with any school necessarily. It's just a nickname, Jordan Chew. Yeah, but you know what? It it, it takes uh, it, it it still has uh, it has black so what black toe vibes. I'm gonna say. Yeah, it's it's got it's tonal in that it's got a light blue like the UNC light blue and then like a dark blue. I think on the heel, if I remember correctly, I think the toe is light. Am I remember yeah. this shit correctly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I'm like whatever, yo. It's like I feel like I feel like shoes that just have a nickname get too hype for no reason. Like if they just didn't have a name for that and people had to call him like the oh the the two blue jordan one i don't think there'd be that much hype around him but now that they have a nickname they're like oh shit you gotta get the you know obsidians yeah also yeah. that's a cool name they're yeah. t- that's easy vibe names nah it's just it's, listen man i'm gonna like i said man what's, jordan, obs- what's an obsidian obsidian is, is blue obsidian blue bro but there's two blues yeah but the the main color is obsidian bro all oh, right i should know that as the designer i should know that's a that's a that's a color yeah, obsidian. Yeah, obsidian ones. It's because it's the it's the blue, I believe. Oh yeah, the heel got the light blue. Okay, yeah. And the front got the dark blue. All right, all right. Yeah, because you'd be like, uh, let's see, uh, obsidian blue. Yeah, hold on. Let me see that color. Yeah, it's a. That's what it is. That's why it's not like it's not like it's a. Yeah, obsidian blue. <laughs> yeah, I don't get the hype though. I don't get the hype around it. 
So and it does and it, it does pay slight homage to uh, North Carolina. So I just want to give you that heads up. His college too. Is that oh, so there is some really. Yeah. That's what. All right. So but I do. I do. I do notice when sh- shoes that are weird get a lot of hype, and they always have a nickname, and there's always some weird tie back to some shit that's pretty loose. Like, well, you also have to realize this same colorway came out earlier, but it was in a women's model. It was yeah, patent true. leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it did have. You know, it does have a little, a little hype behind it. I mean, you know, obviously it's not, it's not going to do numbers and in, in the realm of a a black. In red or white based Jordan, right? But you know, a blue. There are people who enjoy blue colorways, and it, it does have the, uh, you know, there's not. It, it, it's a it's a nice shoe if you you know. Like I said, I'm not gonna say I didn't I didn't attempt to purchase it. Right. I actually I did, but I <laughs> I, I attempted to purchase a size nine. I didn't. And I oh, did not, for me, a present. A present for Christopher. <laughs> But I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. It's one of those things where um, I didn't uh, attempt to go out and purchase a pair of size 12 for them. Uh, for the listeners who got them, congratulations! If you, uh, I know you know you know, add to your one collection. I mean, some people love the Jordan ones. A lot of people do actually, and and good if you purchase them. Uh, on to the next, uh, you know, Jordan brand release, which uh, is going to bring the roof down soon. The what they are gonna fucking make people go crazy? The Travis Scott uh, Air Jordan Six. Yes, um, it's rumored for September fourteenth. I heard September twelfth. Uh, September twelfth is uh, no, that is supposed to be the Sakai. Ah, uh, 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 my release waffle. is mixed up. No, well the 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 Sakai's are supposed to drop uh, on the twelfth. Okay, and, and then the fourteenth. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. I will attempt to get a pair. And I will a pair of what Travis Scott six. Yes, and I will use my plug and see. But the thing is, this is what I learned about Jordan Brand is uh, even when you work there, you have very little power still. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, my, I mean, because my dude, like you know, he's he works at the Jordan Brand, which is probably like you know, it's one of the more coveted job titles you can have on the mm-hmm, campus. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He's a lead designer. He's got access to a but he's he touches a bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? Pause. But he even can't get some shit. Of course. I'm like, yo, I'm a nine, dog. Help me out. He's like, I can't, what? I can't do shit. I can barely do shit for me. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mean, I'm going to try. I'm going to hit him and be like, all right, look, motherfucker. Well, I mean, the the Travis Scott uh, line is, uh, it's been, the way it's been released and, and the way they've released a lot of his shoes have been shock drops. Yes. So a lot of times, you know, uh, like the, the Air Jordan 1 uh, lows. Mm-hmm. The Travis Scott Lowe's they released on his uh, on his website uh, yep. on a Friday night, and then Nike did a draw, and then that was pretty much it. A lot of, there were rumors that it was gonna that was gonna see third party stores um, like Kith and all. I don't think they released them via that way. It was pretty much those two, uh, and then the the website uh, for the highs. It was the Travis Scott. Uh, website on the highs and then nike did uh one of those uh let everyone in which uh which is very uh it was botched as usual <laughs> so now i'm just interested you know when uh to, to see when these release and uh how they're gonna do it, which i think they're gonna do the same thing I, if everything if, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you the way i feel like um the way i feel like things are going the Sakai, something's gonna get pushed back because I don't feel like they're gonna is Nike gonna hammer people on the twelfth of September and the fourteenth of September. I, it's a weird time to drop because school just started, and I know like as adults we don't think that like the school drops kind of apply to us, but they apply to stuff like this because that because everybody's gonna want this shit. You know what I mean? Like the younger yeah. kids are gonna need them. So, but doing it's like after back to school shopping. Mm-hmm. So I feel like they're gotta move something around there. You can't just have like some of the hottest releases after back to school drops because some of the parents aren't gonna want to dish out the money for the kids to have them. You know, listen, man, it don't matter about back to school. Out of I think school. it does. No, because you know why? Because at the end of the day, they're still them shits are still gonna sell out. Oh, I people, mean, of course, of that's course. what I'm saying. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's back to school or not, bro. People are gonna purchase them. It's just a weird time for any retailer to sell stuff. Maybe this is an exception. Sneakers, the hype around them. Yeah, the, sneakers. Yeah. Any time of the year, man. Any time of the year, because you know it. It could be you know uh, September, October, November. Like the stuff is gonna, you know. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not without a shadow of a doubt, bro. So I, I mean, now that I don't want to say summer's over, mm-hmm. but like you know that that's a, I would consider this a pre-summer release. But you mentioned the lows. Um, which I considered one of the top summer shoes. Like, do you have 
like a pick? Do you think that's number one shoe of the summer? Shoe of the summer? Because we did this last year, and we said it was the Travis Scott four. Or, uh, Travis yeah, Scott fours. Yeah, the blue. The blue joints. Um, I think he took it again with the lows. I'm not going to lie, man. No, I would. I mean, I would honestly say there's two shoes that are going to, right as of right now, that are competing for shoe of the year. And I think it's the Sakai Waffles. Which is crazy because when those first were dropping, no one gave a fuck about them. No, people, listen, no, I'm not going to say that. Because I remember uh, there was, before they released, people were trying to move them for like eight, 900. And yeah. then it dipped. And then, you know, dipped to around 350, 400. And then okay. it dipped even lower and once the day of the release. You can get them for like 300, you know, 280, 300. They only really started to pick up hype after they dropped them. And now, if you try to get a pair, it's six, seven hundred dollars Yeah. So there's, I mean, you know, and I'm not just saying that because of the, uh, but I think they're, uh, I think the the blue and the red is going to be the best, you know, probably is going to be the shoe yeah. of the year. But then also the new models that are coming out, the black and the gray and white, Beautiful shoes, man. Yeah, they are beautiful. Aesthetically, they are very beautiful shoes. I think people need to see them on feet before they could actually buy them. Yeah. Like so, in person. So I think, uh, so that, and then you have like the uh, the Travis Scott, uh, I think the ones, the highs are going to be, you know, up there. Are you counting that as a summer shoe? No, because the the, the high, well, no, actually, the, uh, the highs dropped late May. So, I mean, you know, so we're talking. All right, if you count late May, then I'm going to change my answer from the low ones to the high ones. Yeah, it was like late May, I believe. So, I get, so when do we uh, when are we distinguishing summer? Like when school's out? Is that when we're kind of counting the summer? I mean, if you want to say, if you want to say. Because uh, like mid-May is kind of when that shit wraps up. Nah, when I would say, you know, because I remember they dropped uh, towards the end of May. Okay, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking, like, nah, because I guess, like, high school and, like, regular public school goes to, like, I guess June-ish. But, yeah, no, all right, I'll count those. Then, yeah, that's that's my pick. Then Travis takes it again, dude. He's two summers in a row. Oh, yeah, totally. Man, that's crazy. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess we're in agreement on that. Like, that's all right, if he's taking two in a row, that's that's a kind of a big deal, if you ask me. Oh yeah, I mean, we I think you and I have been in this discussion where we said, yo, bro, is like Travis Scott is. He, I think everything he drops, pretty much with the exception of those 33s, people have been going bananas for. Yeah, everyone's kind of slept on the 33s. I thought those were fire. If I didn't already buy that all black pair, I would have copped those. Oh, really? Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I'm a big, like I said, man, I feel like uh, Trav is, uh, it's it's the summer of uh, Trav, man. It's definitely. Summer of Trav, man. But yeah, those, uh, the Sakai's are definitely uh, up there. And um, when did unions drop? Unions dropped uh, in November of last last year. Really? Yeah. Why do I feel like they just came out? That's so weird. Nah, Unions came out November okay. of 2018. Was there a second drop? No. No. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I, just, I feel like they're, st- like, damn. They still got a lot of traction on them then, because I feel like people are still kind of moving those around. Yeah, Unions are, uh, you know, Unions and, and Travis Scott's have, you know, are, are yeah both. All right, Trav, shout out to you. You know, having shoe of the summer two summers in a row. That's mm-hmm, crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you see about his his Reese's Puffs? Yeah, the cereal that he's doing, man. <laughs> it's, just, it's getting out of hand, some of the shit that you could. Did although you, I'm kind of contradicting myself because I said that, like, the hottest shit is when you can have, like, your everyday items just branded to the yeah, shit you yeah, like. Yeah, uh-huh. but this seems stupid to me. This seems on, like, the brick level of shit where I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, listen, if there, he is being that you can market anything Trav does. Then you gotta strike while the the, the iron is hot, bro. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> strike, bro, with Trav, man. <laughs> Reese's Puffs. I haven't watched the doc yet, but I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna watch the doc too, man. I'm excited. To Do see you want to have a watch party? Pause. No. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you don't want to have movie night with your boy? No. <laughs> Not at all. If, for the listeners out there, if you want to have a movie night with Chris, uh, <laughs> jo- join the Discord. Uh, yeah, get on the have, Discord. Yeah, we have, and just tell him, y'all. Lawrence wanna... hates it, but he's he joined, he's bro. Like and like I said, man, on the Discord, I told everyone, I said, I'm just here, so I don't get fined, bro. <laughs> like you, I'm just here. Like you can ask me questions. If I see it, I'll answer. If not, I'm just here, so I don't get fined, bro. <laughs> Straight the fuck up. Um, speaking of getting fined, okay. Um, StockX, mm-hmm. I actually am doing my first selling on there, and I avoided the, I avoided the, I avoided the fine because I sent them 
within the two day notice because mm-hmm. I did the just buy it now. But uh, I did acquire a couple things. I don't want to say them, um, but I did acquire a couple things because I just don't want people to know the amount. But I, I'm getting a check, <laughs> getting a nice check from StockX if they all clear. But this is my first experience, so I want to. Hopefully, they all clear, they get verified, and then I can talk about the experience after. Look at Chris being all secretive and. I'm shit. being a little secretive. I'm being a little secretive. Can that's you, all right. Can you tell the people what you sold, or you can't even tell them what you sold? No, nah, I'll let them know later. I, I want to have it. There. I want to see what the whole thing turns out to be because they're still en route to get verified, and uh, I, they're real. But I've, some of the things that we've covered, they've been saying some fakes are real, some reels are fakes and been sent back. So what, you just find a pair of sneakers in the street and you're like, oh, StockX, here it comes? Look, I, I was in Portland for a week and a half, I'll tell you that. And oh. I came across a couple things, so oh. we're just going to see how it goes. I want oh. I want to pull back with the full experience and give a full review for the listeners. You know there's actually a drop-off location for StockX in New York City. Yeah, I did it while I was there though just to get it out of the way. Oh yeah, cuz you don't want to yeah, you don't want to bring it back. Yeah, cuz what am I going to fuck it? I already I had bought shoes for people that I already had to bring back, you know what I mean? What am well, I going to fucking Let's talk about that because I think that is something that um that the listeners should know. So you went to the Nike employee yes, store. I went to the Nike employee store. So under uh, the invite of my friend who works at Jordan, you get 40% off. If you're an employee there, you get 50. But if you're a guest of an employee, you get 40. So that's a major key here because I, uh, f- I thought for funsies was looking at StockX while I was shopping to mm-hmm. see mm-hmm. that how much of a better deal I was getting. I was like, ah, I'm going to be able to get a better deal on this shit. Eh. So I'm looking around. I All the shoes weren't, Heat. There were the pair of sixes there, but they didn't have them in my size, so I didn't even look at them. Mm-hmm. But all, there was like the John Elliott uh, Nikes there. There was uh, I'm wearing the shoes that I actually did buy. I bought the up tempo 95s and the black and red. There was uh, the Mars landings. There was some shit that I thought you'd be able to move with the discount. You get on there. It's cheaper to buy them on StockX than it is to go to the Nike store with the discount, and it's astounding mm-hmm. because you can get all that shit for so essentially. At least forty percent off per se retail price if you shop on StockX, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it can be like some some good at, like the only reason why I bought these up tempos mm-hmm. was because they were ten dollars cheaper than buying them on StockX. That was the only item, really, out of all the shoes that I was looking at that I was interested in that was cheaper buying there than buying at StockX. Yeah, that's um, that goes to show you, man. That um, that goes to show you that. StockX, you can fucking StockX is get some deals, which is part of the reason why I felt validated in starting to use that as a platform to sell sneakers. And also, it's it's I'm not selling them because I'm trying to you know keep the money for I'm trying to use them for a trip to Japan that later, uh, which I'll tell you guys more about later as stuff comes out that I could say. But yo, this shit is fucking crazy. How, there's no reason why you should be able to buy them cheaper on StockX like that. No, I understand. That's that's why they're a billion dollar company because they've really revolutionized mm-hmm. the purchasing of sneakers. Because although there's internal problems on the back end with like you know <laughs> the fucking leaks of yeah, information, yeah, yeah. people whole pay- PayPal's getting fucked up because people buying the info actually using it and shit. You see any of that? No. I saw a couple screenshots of some some dudes just getting fucking ravaged in their fucking really? PayPal, dude. Oh, dude. There's a whole um. There's multiple Instagram accounts now about uh, how StockX is fucking up. There's like, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll try to remember. I can't remember them off the top, but I've seen them. I'll maybe leave them in the description or something. But there's just screenshots of dudes' PayPal's getting ran up from the fucking leak. Really? Yeah. So I w- actually, Lawrence, I'd pay attention because I know you were. I signed up after that, so they're probably a little tightened. But I would just keep I'll, anyone who uses StockX, keep your PayPal or whatever your payment method is. Uh, just keep an eye out. Not to say that you're going to actually get hit, but I no, mean, I understand. Yeah, yeah, it's very. Um it's very interesting. Yeah, if you don't pay attention, you know who knows what could happen. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that shit is crazy, dude. How the fuck can you get them for like it's almost half off on all the shoes? Yeah, I mean on some not the crazy ones, obviously the crazy ones. You know that's when you're dropping like two thousand. But I mean you can get some decent shoes at half off essentially. Bro, when you hit me up and because uh, Chris asked, he uh, texted me, he was like, "Hey, do you want these and this and." And I'm gonna be honest with you. The first thing I did was I looked at Flight Club and yeah, StockX, exactly. and I was like, "Um, if this is not a deal, deal, I, I don't, want, you know, it's, it's not something that I love. Yeah, and it'd be more one of those like, oh, I'm just adding this to the collection. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, no, cause I felt you. Cause after I was like, mm-hmm. I hit you with the, uh, oh man, they got the John Elliott's here. My guy's gonna be hype. You're the first person I hit when I saw him. I was like, yo, your shoe's here, and you were like, nah, I'm good. I was like, really? Damn. Nah. <laughs> 
You but, know, you know what it is. It's like I said, man. When you start thinking about, I mean, especially a shoe that's two hundred and fifty bucks, right? Yeah. And then you know you get forty percent off, which is uh, that would be a hundred dollars off. All right. So you, yeah. So you're still paying one fifty. And I was looking on StockX, and you know, a pair uh, the icons, John Elliott icons in black, were only selling for like I think one seventy five, and I'm like, I don't even know how much the tax is in Portland. Is it tax? No, there was no tax. No tax. So right now on StockX, the shoe that I was uh, sending pictures to Lawrence to to get, it's one sixty. That's and that's in the size nine. That's a nine and a half. That's my so if size. you go to size twelve. Twelve, it's uh two hundred bucks, one ninety five, one ninety five. So yeah, I mean, so it's not even that crazy. I mean, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, spend money that I feel like uh, for a shoe that I don't love. That's what I'm saying for you guys out there listening. I know we always be like, yo, fucking quantity, quantity matters. Have as many, but like, yo, bro, if you don't love the shoe, well, yeah, we, I think we've double backed on that kind of and been like quality first. Mm-hmm. Quantity is nice. Because that's a hard flex. Mm-hmm. But then quality, though. Because if you have a lot of dog shit, like, I, I think I've admitted, I have a lot of dog shit just because I'm a sample size, and I mm-hmm. worked at Reebok, and people were just throwing me dog shit. Mm-hmm. Now, some of that dog shit ended up being fire, mm-hmm. whether it be, like, some pump I made work, like, you know, on feed or whatever. But mm-hmm. when they were giving them to me, like, the only heat I really got from Reebok as a sample were the Kamikaze 2s before they came out. Okay. That was the hardest flex I had from them. Uh, and also, I did get a pair of those... Uh, Supersonic Kamikaze 2s that have like the wet material on them. I think I've mentioned them before, mm-hmm. but they look wet on the green. And yeah, I just Kamikazes and a couple pumps, those are the only flexes I had. And they're obscure flexes. Jeez. So I mean, Reebok is hard to me, hard to flex with too. I don't know, man. I think it's, uh, I mean, I'm a Bach boy at heart. So I'm, I'm yeah. going to defend Reebok till, till I die. Yeah, I see. You've. You fucking you. So you you be the type of person like you see how like uh, chicken sandwiches. You be uh you be the the Reebok sandwich. Guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Reebok sandwich boy. Yeah, you be a Reebok <laughs> that might be the title of this episode. Reebok, I'm a, Reebok sandwiches. <laughs> let me get a Reebok chicken sandwich. Yeah, let me get that. Yo, pump up some chicken for me yeah. with them steroids. Yeah. Well, listen, man. <laughs> Speaking of things that are very hard to acquire, uh, Virgil Abloh has the ultimate idea. <laughs> Dude, your segues are so hard. <laughs> yes. No. Uh, I saw. I came across a tweet mm-hmm. from uh, young Virgil Abloh, the <laughs> designer of the year, I guess. I don't know like what the fuck you categorize him at. But mm-hmm. he had a tweet saying that um, the whole idea behind the Nike uh, and Off-White collabs is that you take the accessories that come with the shoe, so mm-hmm. the zip tie, the extra Virgil lacing system mm-hmm. and uh, the laces that say, quote, shoelaces on them. Mm-hmm. And the idea, according to him, is that you're supposed to take those and apply them to your own shoes that you already have to make your own custom uh, DIY off-white collab. Mm-hmm. 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 Now, Lawrence, what do you think about this idea? Nah, you ain't going to pull up with no fucking uh, Jordan uh, 7 uh, Bordeaux with some... Off white shoelaces. <laughs> no, you are not. Nah, son, you ain't doing that, son. Yo, That's if, not how life works, B. It, it feels like he, he would like this. So I went to art school, right? And mm-hmm. I feel like this is like the kid who he did all the work to like none of what the requirements of the project were, mm-hmm. and then he got to class and was like, Nah, it's like some, you know, like here's my explanation on spot. And then they're like, all right, you, I guess you kind of did it. You looped it in. You get mm-hmm, a C. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. what I feel like this tweet is. This tweet is so full of shit. Fuck you, Virgil. Yeah. That is not the idea. You did not have that beginning. Go fuck yourself. What nah, is that? Nah, that this shit, guy's full of shit. That shit trash, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's twer- trash as fuck. You suck. So you telling me if I give you some, if I give you a pair of like uh, shoelaces, you gonna put them shits in your like uh, Air Maxes or your fucking Reeboks? Yeah, I'm gonna put them on my pumps, dog. Yeah, you gonna put them- <laughs> I'm gonna put them on my Kamikazes. My yeah. sample kamikaze and see what everyone says. It it is getting to the point where it's like, all right, bro, no more, stop. Why is Nike? It's it, supposed to be. I don't know how true it is, but there's like supposed to be an off white golf shoe. I don't know if this is. Yeah, like no, legit. it's uh, homeboy was wearing it. I forget his name, but uh, yeah, one of the dudes was fucking wearing them. Really? Yeah, I saw a, a picture of the guys fucking golfing in them. It's kind of ridiculous. Also, like if if that was the idea, it would have been said earlier. Like, there's no way I'm, like, fourth quarter, I'm letting you throw up a three like that. Mm-hmm. That's dumb. That's some dumb shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Customizable fucking 
do your do it yourself. I mean, he did kind of allude to it when um, the the blue MCAs came out. And he was like, "Yo, go down to the hard go down to the hardware store, and make your own." Which- so, so basically, what it uh, what what that golf joint is? It's Brooks Copa, and he uh, he did the whole Clint Frazier thing. It looks like he uh, took a pair of Air Max nineties, yeah, sold and then resold them with the golf yeah uh, shit. Because Clint Frazier is notorious for doing that too. I mean. Th- Low key, I mean, we haven't really talked about it, but golf is getting hype. They're trying to make golf hype. I don't know why. I'm not buying it, but they're trying to make. I th- I think they're just trying to figure out how to resell it, like the same shoe. Just like, oh, we'll put spikes on it. You know, it really. That's what I feel like. I don't know. I feel like golf is getting a lot of special treatment lately. Cleats in general, but I don't know. That's just me. What's that? It's Brooks Copa. Oh, with his wife? Damn, she's hot. I don't know if it's his wife, but... Who is it? I mean, somebody. Girl, oh, I didn't bro. see a ring on her finger. No. Hey, what's up, girl? She'd be like, she'd be like what's, your, what's your stroke game like? What is your... <laughs> what, what do you... I shoot uh, I, with a strong handicap. Yeah. <laughs> nah, My handicap to stroke is hard. <laughs> you, ain't pulling up, you ain't pulling up to a date with her with some Reeboks with sh- off-white shoelaces. <laughs> She will fuck you up. Yo, check out my custom. (laughs) Off whites. (laughs) My custom off (laughs) Bach whites. Off Reeboks. My Bach whites? Yeah, Bach whites. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Rain Man, baby, Sean Kemp. Nah, I'm just. And Virgil. Yeah, that's just terrible. But, um. Oh, this shit is so fucking stupid. Speaking of collabs, uh, Undefeated and Air Max 90. uh, uh, They have uh, Air Max 90 coming out. Yeah, this shit is hard. I like those. Oh, I hate them. The white and blue ones? Oh, my God, bro. How do you like the fucking um, Jordan ones and not those? What's Jordan? The Obsidians? Yeah. I never. I said that. They're all right. I never said I wanted a pair of Obsidians. But, uh, no, I saw the Undefeated. In uh, my universe, that's your favorite shoe is the Obsidians. Yeah, you sure. live for those, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, those were uh, those were not something. I have to see them in a different color because uh, I did not like. They the, got the black. There's a black one. I I only saw the blue one. The so the teaser photos had a uh, the heel tabs. Mm-hmm. There was a black and red one, and then the white and blue one. So I'm sure it's just going to be a uh, black and red version. Okay, of well, that I can deal with the black and red version, but the white and blue ones are white and blue ones are clean, bro. What are you disgusting. talking about? Disgusting. Get out of here. You're trash. No, I'm serious, bro. I did not like them. So it's supposed to be uh, uh, black and fury blue, black and solar red, black and green spark. Black and optic yellow. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, it's supposed to be eight colorways, supposedly. Oh, damn. That's supposed. Like that's what pirate, pirate, uh, pi leaks, pi, pirates. They are, uh, they are uh, <laughs> pirates. They are pirates. So it's uh, <laughs> they are Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. They're European pirates. So uh, yeah, so I guess that's because you know uh, undefeated did the Kobe's recently. Yeah, yeah, they had that four pack or whatever, and they sold them all together. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I don't think they're gonna sell eight Air Max. 90s. What was the total on the? Pack? What was it? Uh, I think it was like seven ninety or some shit like that. Damn, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. I mean, I don't know. I maybe that works out to something good. So yeah, I got to see what undefeated is. Uh, you know. You know what? While we're talking about shoes that are coming out soon, mm-hmm. I do want to mention because last episode, uh, I th- we were talking about the New Balance one. Mm-hmm. Dude, New Balance is fucking actually kind of doing some shit correctly. Hold on, let me pull this up. Can you cover me while I type in this weird ass name? Yeah, no problem. So, uh, for those of you guys who uh, love sports, uh, Demarcus Cousins is uh, oh, he's fucked. He is in trouble right now. <laughs> he's so much in trouble. Uh, yeah, he said that he would put a bullet in his baby mom's head. Uh, he uh, they, he was sought on an arrest warrant for domestic violence. So, uh, yeah, that is not good. No. Uh, and he's already undergoing surgery for a torn ACL. He's going to miss the entire season, most likely. Things are not looking good for Mr. Cousins. How you got a torn ACL with a warrant for your arrest? Well, it'll be easy to find. <laughs> he can't run. <laughs> Fuck, hold on. I can't. I, I think I wrote the name down wrong. I love, Chris, it's... I love when Chris has me cover and then he can't <laughs> fucking. Shut up. There's two shoes. Um, I know one is uh, uh, easy to find on one of the blogs here. Uh, but fucking. There's, yeah, so this is the one. This is one of them anyway. Mm-hmm. It's the New Balance uh, New MSCRC silhouette. Mm-hmm. So what I like is because you know how I was kind of bigging them up for going away from the end branding? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they kept the end branding on this one, but they used like the jacquard webbing to make the end. 
Okay, I like that, yeah. There's another model uh, I wrote down, MLB50YSC, which I guess I wrote that down wrong, that uh, that doesn't have the NB at all, doesn't have an N anywhere. Okay. But I just like, dude, like I said before, like I'm super hyped that they're getting away from just the N branding. I think they can enter, like I said, like that, they're keep a whole new market, you can have a whole new customer, it's not about the dad shoe, mm-hmm. like this is supposed to be a hiking shoe. And it goes perfectly with the chart guard webbing, or uh, I mean, whatever kind of webbing that is, but to make the end. But uh, I'm just, I just want to pick them up again, man. That shit is fucking awesome. Ooh, would you put the uh, Virgil Avalos shoelaces in those? <laughs> yeah, my new balance. I'm going to rip out the um, kamikaze tongue. I'm going to put that in there because it's a booty. And then I'm going to use the off white Virgil ra- lacing system. Ew, sweet. <laughs> so, listen, man. Uh, we talked about New Balance. We talked about Reebok. We talked about Nike. It's time to talk about. Adidas. Oh, and I thought you were gonna say Lee Nang. <laughs> no, I would. I would never mention that name on this podcast. Um, just trying to talk about Adidas, man. Kanye West has new album in stores next month called Jesus is King. All right, and uh, Kim Kardashian's teased it. Uh, if this is anything like any of Kanye West's recent albums, this shit ain't coming out. Uh, well, Yandi did leak. I did listen to it. Um, I put the link in the Discord, Lawrence, if you want to get in there. Um, but it is not bad. I liked it, dude. I liked it a lot. The first night, I I was in Portland still, and uh, me and my boy listened to it, and we were kind of vibing out. We were working while we were listening to it. This shit was kind of fire. I'm not going to really? lie. Yeah, he's got that new body track. So if you you guys can still find it on SoundCloud and shit. Uh, most of the rips are taken down. But the new body song with uh, Ty, Dolla Sign, and Nikki's fire. And then I also like the Alien joint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those two are the sounding, uh, I mean, the top ones for me. But I liked Yandi. I wish he got an official release. Because I wish it was like better mastered and mixed and shit or whatever, mm-hmm. like whatever they fucking do in the booth. But mm-hmm. uh, I liked it. You should get. A, you should try to get a chance to listen to it when you can. L. I'll take a look when I get a chance. Yeah, but a lot of stuff is going on with Adidas. So, I mean, they get the whole Kanye thing. Mm-hmm. They're about to have a fight with J. Crew over uh, if they can have three stripes or not. Okay. And um, there was another thing. Oh yeah, they have a deal with Ninja, the, the video game streamer. Okay, so if you're not if you he's maybe not familiar, but um, maybe some of the listeners know because he played Fortnite with like Drake and Travis Scott at one point. But I guess he has a deal with Adidas, which is crazy. He's the first video gamer to have a shoe deal, which is dope as fuck. Yeah, which is it just talks about the times we're living in. I mean, like when you and I were on CBS Sports, we uh, had that that little sector there about uh, the Knicks having their own official uh, 2K team. Yep. So it's like gaming is getting um, accepted. You know, at a at an incredible scale. Yes, this shit is becoming more standardized in society than I think I've ever seen anything. <laughs> because yes, it is. I remember going to Super Smash Brothers tournaments in high school, mm-hmm. and it was like a bunch of nerds in a basement where they did they wanted no, like all the hotels that we rented to do the tournaments. They were like, we don't want you to be seen by anybody. Really? <laughs> yeah, they were like, you get over there, you stay in like the mopped like weird sweaty section of the hotel. <laughs> but now it's like, yo, Ninja, you want your own fucking clothing collection? It's wild, dude. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Good for Ninja, though. Congratulations. I don't know who you really are because I'm showing my age, but uh, <laughs> good for you. He's like the number one streamer, I guess. Uh, okay. He also just took a deal uh, with not Twitch. So Twitch is the general one. That's like the thing I use mm-hmm. when I stream, but there's like a Microsoft one that I guess he signed a deal with, too. So he's he's making some moves. Good for him, He's man. being the Kawhi Leonard of the streaming industry and going off, off the beaten path there. Good for him, man. That's what's up, man. But, um... So I, I mean I I know I just asked you but uh, are you looking forward to new Kanye albums soon? Yeah I am and shoes. Uh, I watched that Forbes interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you got a chance to see it but uh, it came out a couple months ago. I'm kind of behind, but uh, yeah I'm excited for a new album. Of course I love all new Kanye. I mean you're with me on that I'm sure. It's yeah like I am. Any, any new music I'm down to listen to no matter what the fuck he said in the media recently. And then um, yeah there was some fucking shoes in there dude that I didn't see kind of, like they had some weird hybrids. In that interview, really? Yeah, the whole circle of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you if you could pause and kind of look at some of them, there's like weird hybrids of different models with each other, and there's like high top versions, lows, there's like mad different slides. It's crazy what he fucking got in there. And he, that interview was actually pretty inspiring because uh, what the, some of the stuff he was saying are things I've believed when it comes to design forever. Mm-hmm. Like that, he had a whole thing about. Um, did you get to watch it? No. All right, so I'll just say this one thing because I this is like this is my favorite part of the interview. So the homeboy interviewing him. Uh, it was not a good interviewer. He was like, so out of all these shoes here, he's got the whole circle mm-hmm. or whatever. He's got all of them around. He's like, so out of all these, like how many of these are samples versus real ones? He's like, I'm not a numbers guy. I don't know. He's like, all right, so say you have 2,000 shoes. 
they're all samples. How many of those get to production? He's like, dude, I told you, I'm not a numbers thing. And the guy's like, all right, well, I mean, I'm trying to write an interview, dude. Like, he's like, well, you know, I'm telling you. Like, put it this way. If your grandmother surprises you with a cake, you you know, like, you know, and you like sneakers, you like sneakers. What do you feel when you like sneakers? He's like, joy. I like, I feel joy. He's like, all right. So do you try to calculate that joy? That's what I'm doing with the sneakers. Like, if your grandmother gives you a cake, you don't ask her about the batter. You know what I mean? He's kind of doing that weird, like, philosophizing shit, mm-hmm. which I, I sent that link to a bunch of people, and they were like, yeah, he's delusional. I'm like, I don't know, man. He got a valid point in there. Because sometimes, you, what? You, sometimes you got to go with the feeling, because the feeling's right. the right way to go. You're right. I'm just saying, like, a, a lot of people were looking at me like, this is what you're getting out of it, but it's a, it's a good point. You don't question some of this shit when it, you go by feeling, because that's how it feels. You're right. You're right. You're right. You seem like you want to kind of come back at me, though. Nah, nah, I'm just, I'm taking this one all in, Chris. This is, you're, you're the pilot on this segment. Yeah? On this, yeah, sure. Which, if, for the listeners at home, if you probably know that means Lawrence wants to shit on me, but he's, he doesn't, he's not going to do it on air. No. Nope. <laughs> I don't know, that one hit me, dude. I got, I was like, damn, I'm with that. Because mm-hmm. some people, when you go by numbers, mm-hmm. numbers ain't going to get you to the innovative shit. What do you mean? If you go to Foot Locker, what kind of product is in there, dude? It's black and white logo shit. Is they don't do anything crazy. And then when you do then when they do buy the shit, it doesn't do the same numbers as the plain black or the plain white shit, so they go, We're not doing this again. Mm-hmm. Cause that they go by numbers. Buyers for any of these stores, any of these major retailers, these sporting good places, all they want is a black hoodie, a white hoodie with the logo on it. They just want basic tees. Basic. They, they don't want any of the crazy shit. Mm-hmm. And that's why you look at some of the um like the cooler hip stores. Like, you know, any think of any, like, the tier one places here, and they have the crazy shit. It mm. doesn't really move like that. Got you. Because buyers only want to sell the basic shit. But if you look at that mentality and you try to buy for the mass market, you won't come with anything innovative, and that's what Kanye did. He made that fucking company a billion-dollar company it, quicker than anyone else has done something like that before. I agree with you. He said a lot of shit. I'm, I'm like on a pro Kanye rant right now. Yeah, you are, man. I'm, I'm what was the line in Gone? So the with the consequence and uh, Cam song. Oh, here we go. See, Chris, you shouldn't have done that to me because now I don't, I don't remember it. No, because he's like, uh, I can, I won't sell you dreams, but the inspiration is free. Mm-hmm. That line. Every fucking sneaker company, every designer uses Kanye's shit as a reference, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he said what he. Said way back then It's like the inspiration's free bro Take that shit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Remember in the Charlemagne interview I don't know if you remember All this shit He, he takes Charlemagne To the Yeezy uh, studio He had um, a color board Where he was working On all the colors Which ended up being A bunch of the fucking 350s Okay All like the clay and shit mm-hmm. He's like yo I just tweeted this today So people can use it too Cause I know This is him saying it I know they can't do What I'm about to do With this color palette mm-hmm. So I just gave it to him For free They were gonna take it anyway I did not know that yeah, man, I'm very pro Kanye right now. After that Forbes interview, super pro Kanye. Good for him. <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna walk with me on the rest of this journey. I, I, I'll walk with you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just super pro Kanye right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You leaving me out on the ledge? I see you. It's okay. Nah, I'm, I'm pro Kanye too, man. I still fuck with you, Lawrence. I fuck with you too, man. <laughs> so did the easy jump over the jump, man? <laughs> Uh, if you know, I'm not gonna say he did, but I mean he jumped as high as he could in a, in a shorter amount of time. Cause you know why I say Yeezy didn't jump over the jump, man? Because Forbes released the annual um, richest their their sneaker. You know, uh, oh MJ number one, of course, 130 million dollars, man. What is Ye on there? Uh, well, this is uh, this is like basketball. Oh, like, okay. So like, uh, he re- Michael Jordan rakes in 130 million annually from Jordan brand. Uh, number two is LeBron James at thirty-two million dollars. Of course, that makes perfect sense. And then you know, so I mean, Jordan, wait, can I try to guess the other three? Uh, sure. Um, are they active players? Uh, yeah, the rest are. Well, the next two are active. Kyrie. Nope. Really? No. Oh, that throws my whole shit out for a loop. All right, fuck it, I bail. Tell me what. Tell me. Uh, give me a second because I just uh, just got off of that. It's uh, Kevin Durant is three. Oh fuck! At twenty six mil, Steph Curry is fourth. At Damn, that makes sense. Twenty million. Kobe Bryant is fifth, sixteen million. James Harden is uh, 
Sixth with fourteen million. Wow. And seventh is the rookie Zion Williamson. What? Per- How oh. is Kyrie not even on there? Uh, Kyrie is in the top ten. Oh, okay. D Wade uh, eighth with leaning at twelve mil. Yeah. Russell Westbrook uh, ninth at Jordan twelve million. Kyrie Irving tenth. Uh, he's tied with Derrick Rose uh, for eleven million dollars annually. Word. So, yeah, it's uh you know sneaker game is uh you know it's pretty big. Uh, but yeah, Michael Jordan obviously far and away. I mean, he yeah, of played, course, he hasn't played a basketball game in 21 years. I mean, no. no, I'm sorry, not 21. I apologize, listeners. <laughs> uh, 2003 was his last game, so that makes it 16 years. I mean, over he, a decade. He doesn't need to touch a basketball for the rest of his life. Oh, well, there you go. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, I think we're going to wrap this one up, but I did kind of want to mention something that I thought was a funny idea. So I was with a former guest and, uh, you know, peer, Mike Coscarelli, the other night, and uh, I was talking to him because I had a wedding yesterday, Mm -hmm. and his boy was about to get married, so we were talking about wedding shit, and Mm -hmm. streetwear weddings have always kind of become a topic. Mm -hmm. We've talked about streetwear weddings numerous times over the years of doing this podcast, Mm -hmm. Um but we were talking about uh, – because his boy who was about to get married was on there, and we were I was telling him about the StockX, how it's, like, cheaper to get him on StockX than it is to actually go to the store and buy him. Mm-hmm. We're like, yo, we should have a StockX registry. Like, instead of fucking, like, getting West Elm or whatever, like, you get China, <laughs> like, you should just have a StockX registry. So it should be a Stock Reg Extra. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, because, like, who wants plates anymore? Uh, you want plates when you get married? I'm good. I don't need China. I need Chinese boys to make my shoes. You feel me? You're like, let's go to go to StockX, get my stock regex. Uh, <laughs> the listeners are gonna hate you for this one. <laughs> no, they're not. They're it's gonna, gonna fucking be great. hate you. They are gonna they're gonna message me and tell me <laughs> no, how not. much they hate you for running <laughs> a fucking bit on the end of a podcast. <laughs> we just couldn't have a natural conversation about fucking sneakers. <laughs> And this is, it was a natural conversation I had that I'm just now bringing to you on the podcast. Mm. <laughs> Listeners, do me a favor. Just message me. I won't even tell Chris who messaged me, but just <laughs> just be like, yo, tell Chris to stop running fucking bits at the end of the podcast. They enjoyed it for 62 minutes. <laughs> Stock or you action. could just tell me on the Discord or the subreddit, or you could like, subscribe, and comment. On the review, mm-hmm. uh, what you really think. Which there you go. It's all you should do. I am at not that Cheney, C H E N E Y on social media, uh, LZD325. I'm Lawrence DeLoach. Just yeah. follow me. You can, uh, I don't remember the number, but you can text the podcast. Uh, it's on the Instagram. Yeah, just get on the Discord. Uh, sub. That's just that's just kind of fun. Get on it. Holla at us. Send us pictures of shit that you copped. Yeah, get in there. It's a fun hang. Everybody is, you know, we're all sneakerheads that fucking listen to this podcast. There dude. you go. Me and Lawrence are in there. Me, uh, willingly, him by force. <laughs> yeah, I got forced in that shit. But I'm having fun. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, yeah, you already know the deal. This is it. Any final words, L? Nah, just... Uh, have fun next episode. Next time we uh, we record, well, next time, uh, just listen to the shit. I'm sorry, I'm fucking shit brain right now. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to the Sub Podcast. This is episode seventy six. Sean Bradley's number, yo, Sean fucking Bradley. <laughs> All right, peace, bitches. Later.